Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this tutorial, I'm extremely excited because I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous butterfly stitch with seed beads. Now I have to tell you, in case you are new to my channel, I've been beading for over 26 years. I've been on YouTube for 12 years teaching how to make beaded jewelry, but for the past 10 years I've been trying to figure out how to make a seed bead butterfly and I couldn't figure it out. I tried it I think at least three times and every time I went to make it I ended up creating something else. So I thought since I've been beading for 26 years I should by now figure out how to make a 2D butterfly, right? Like it's small, it should be easy. I, I could figure this out. And I've made some really awesome 3D designs over the years. You know, I've done cupcakes, uh, ice cream cones, turtles, ladybug rings. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't think of right now. Um, one of my favorite was the snowman. I'll put pictures up. So I've made some really epic designs that have took me weeks to design and when I do YouTube videos it's several weeks to edit so I've worked pretty hard and I've made some really incredible things. I have done so many seed bead tutorials and seed beads are popular right now. If you want to and you're new to my channel, do some seed bead projects. I will put pictures up and if you like what you see, put the title into my YouTube channel and you will find those tutorials on my YouTube channel. I have done a lot of projects. I was thinking about doing a YouTube short of my favorite variation of the daisy chain because daisy chain stitch is very popular right now. Now the daisy chain stitch comes in several different variations, there's a ton of them, but the one that I do is my favorite variation and I have a tutorial on it, I'll put the picture up now.
that video that I did 10 years ago on the daisy chain stitch has 1.6 million views and it is my biggest video to date which is crazy because I thought I've made a lot of other nice things that you know should be more popular but anyways after I did that video I showed how you can play with the daisy chain stitch and change the color of beads to end up getting completely different looking designs but it's the same stitch it's just the beads are different colors it looks like a completely different design so I'll put pictures up of what I'm talking about you can go and watch those videos too now remember I was talking about how I was wanting to do a YouTube short video on my favorite variation of the daisy chain stitch and as I started making the little flowers that thought passed my mind again. Alicia do you remember all those years when you tried making a little seed bead butterfly and it didn't turn out? Well I think it's time to give it another go. You should be able to do it by now right? And so I went for it. Oh my god! I finally did it! When I first started working on it, after I did the first butterfly, I went to do another butterfly and I kept thinking that they had to be side by side, right? But butterflies are shaped like this. Wide at the top, narrow at the bottom. And so this started turning into a circle. It wasn't turning out. I'm like, I just gotta figure out how to line these up to make this work because I finally got it. It's so cute. And so I'm like, well, maybe I should do it diagonally. And so I did, and it worked, and I was so excited. Oh my gosh, let's see if I can connect them together. And so I made one, right? And then I started making the second one, and again, I tried to connect them where they were in a straight line. I'm like, no, that's not working. I think it's going to have to go in another direction. So I did, and they were facing in different directions. And so the second one I came out with actually kind of looks like they're flying in all different directions. Let's get into this design. It is so much fun. You're going to be addicted. Here is the list of materials you will need to make a butterfly bracelet. Now I'm going to show you guys how to make both versions. I'm going to show you how to do this one first and then I'll show you how to do this one. To make these I'm using Fireline. You can use six pound or eight pound. Some people even like to use four pound. It's up to you. As long as it will fit through your seed beads, use it. And you're going to need a different amount to make uh, whichever bracelet. So if you're going to make this variation with the daisy chain, you will need six feet of fireline thread. If you're going to make the butterfly only version, you will need seven feet. So this one takes an extra foot to make. Now, this is an awesome bracelet, but you can also make this as an anklet. If you want to make an anklet, I'm not totally sure, but I think you would add about two more feet extra to make this into an anklet. And you can also, if it ends up short, you can add an extender chain, which would also just add cuteness to your anklet. Not everybody has the same ankle size. So um, this was six feet, so you would do eight feet for an anklet on this one, and this would be nine feet for an inklet on this one. If you want to do a choker, you would probably double your thread. So this would be 12 feet, this would be 14. I know that sounds like a, a long, crazy amount, but if you do practice making this as a bracelet first, then you would probably want to move to making it for a choker if you know somebody that would wear it. Um, my secret to working with really long pieces of thread is to take your thread and pull a lot of it through the needle, like, I don't know, like a third of it through the needle. It makes it shorter, easy to work with, and uh, Fireline is my favorite thread because it's wiry, so it doesn't tangle as much. You're going to need a size 10 beading needle. My favorite brand to use is Tulip. I can use... I think they sell them in a two-pack, but you can use those needles over and over and over and over. They don't break like John James. I don't like the John James needles. You're also going to need seed beads. I use Eleveno Preciosa for this one. For this one, I use Vintage Venetian, but I'm not sure. They might be Tenos, but I do know that different brands are not the same size. Like, um, I would say check... 
Preciosa and Miyuki are more close where I've actually used them together and you couldn't tell that they were both different brands. But um, that's Vintage Venetian. It could be 10 O's or 11 O's. Now, very important, when you're selecting your seed beads, make sure they are the same size. Okay? Some seed beads might say they're 11, like 11 O Mukis. They are going to be smaller than 11 O Toho. Toho's are more cylinder shaped almost like a Delica so that could cause you to have problems so you want to use the same looking size of a bead. Miyuki and uh, Czech Preciosa they work great together and you can also use the cheaper um, seed beads um, you know the ones that aren't so uniform I just recommend that you go through them and pick out the ones that are more uniform because that's kind of how the vintage Venetian seed beads were and your bracelet will probably look like this one here which is cool because it does have dimension it has like texture to it it turned out good okay so that's an important tip and you're also going to need two jump rings or split rings doesn't matter this one I'm using split rings this one I'm using uh, jump rings for here but these are stainless steel so they are very very strong and you're going to need a clasp and I'm using a lobster claw clasp and for the bracelet I'm making in the video since I, I'm so excited I, I thought I would uh, celebrate by using a vintage um, seed bead color mix which this here is really retro to me it's just opaque seed beads these are Czech Preciosa so I will be using these for this project and you can do as many colors as you want I'm going to show how to uh, make this one first, so let's go ahead and get into this. Remember, I will have the material list down there below in the description bar. I will have links, and I will probably also have notes. So let's get started. So in this bracelet, I have two different colored flowers and two different colored butterflies. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to have a red flower and a blue flower, a white butterfly, and an orange butterfly. I have to start by picking up my first flower color, which will be red. And I have to pick up only two uh, seed beads. And I do believe these are Tenno Czech Preciosa seed beads, by the way. And you can buy them all mixed together. Um, I, don't, I don't know where I got these from, but I've had them forever. Okay, so two, and then you have to pick up the leaf color, and you want five of those. Okay, like this. Now slide these down. Okay. And you wanna pass your needle back through all of these making a circle because we're going to tie a surgeon's knot so just like that hold on to them pull your thread through it's going to be a circle like this you want to have a six inch tail because this is just the perfect length to go back and secure your piece so let's see let's scoot this down Okay. Mm, a little bit more. And, and. Do I got it? Okay. So, about there. I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot so I go over and under once. Pull it down. Did I get that length right or not? Yeah, it's just right. Okay. So over and under once, and then over and under twice. So one time, two times, and pull this down. Oh, look at that. See what it did to me? I got caught. So I'm just going to lift it up so the knot falls where I need it to, right there. And I'm going to pull this tight. Okay done with the ruler for now well I'll need it again when I go to start another bracelet and um, I'm gonna make sure that I stay in camera okay I'm going to hold it like this I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna pass through these two beads I'm gonna pick up two red 
because I'm working on the flower, in the center of my flower color. So that will be a yellow. And I have to go down through the second red bead, like this. Pull this through. There's half of our flower. I'm going to pick up two red seed beads and I'm going to go through this bead that is uh, sticking out right there. Okay. It always helps if you put your fingers on this as you go through it because it keeps it from loosening up. That's how I get the best tension. And also, pulling it this way, you want to grab it and go turn it down and pull it like this because that also makes it tighter. See what I'm saying? If I just pull this way, it's not really making it tighter. You have to turn the work and go like that. Get what I'm saying? Okay, now I have to do the leaf part. So I'm going to pick up a green for my leaf and then my butterfly color. So let's do a white butterfly. And then the green part again. So just like that. I'm going to take the needle and go down through the second red seed bead. Hold this between your fingers because it will get loose. So are you loosening up? I'm going to pull that thread. Hold this between the fingers, keeping it taut. Okay. And I now have this. Now I'm going to pick up a green and my butterfly color, which will be white this time. I'm going to go through the white bead. Okay, again, hold this between your fingers. We're only picking up two beads this time. Pulling this tight, and it should look like this. Okay, now normally, if we were just doing the daisy chain stitch, in my favorite variation here, I would pick up two white beads and a yellow and I would go down through that second white bead, continuing the daisy chain stitch. Okay? But this is the point where we change it up and make it into a butterfly. I'm going to pick up three white beads. Okay? And I'm going to form a circle. So I have to go up through these two. Like this. Hold it between your fingers. Okay, so we have, well, it's, it's a circle with a thread. Okay, it's just like a five pointed circle. Now I'm going to flip this over because I have to add a C bead right here, a six C bead, to get the shape of our butterfly, the bottom of the wing, so it has like a point to it. So I pick up one white seed bead, like this, and I go through these two. Now very important, make sure you keep this tight. Okay, mine's tight, so I'm going to hold it between my fingers again. And I'm turning my hand this way, so I have the best tension, okay? It's very tight. Like that, can't see any thread. Now I'm going to pick up a black, a white, and a black. Now this part here normally would be where, after I make a flower, would be where I add the green line, right? The greenery from my flowers, it's leaf. So this time, instead of, you know, the black beads, they, they would be green. This time I'm, they're black. So that's how I have figured out how to make this. So I'm going to go through the second bead. I hope you understand what I'm saying. If you've made my variation before, you know what I'm talking about of the daisy chain stitch, okay? So I have this. So see how my black beads are starting to line up? I'm going to pick up another black bead. This is for the body, right? And a white bead. Okay? I'm going to pull this tight. As you pass up through the next bead, the white bead here, hold this between your fingers and bring these two beads up. Okay, pull it tight, and there we go. So see, um, the black beads would have normally been the green beads in the daisy chain stitch, but they ha I need the body for my butterfly. So now I'm going to make this part here again. So I have to pick up three white. One, two, and three, like this. And I'm going to go through these two white, like that. Hold it between your fingers, pull 
this through. Again, move your hand in the direction you're pulling your thread like this. Okay. Now this can be deceiving looking at it this way. It looks like I already have a bead down here, but I don't. It's just how it's sitting. So if I push it this way, now it looks like the beads at the top and there's no bead at the bottom. So what I have to do is I have to go through these three that I just added. So I went through two there. I'm going to go through the third one like this. Okay. It's loosening up on me. So I pull this thread tight, hold on to it, and then pull my needle through. Like this. I'm going to add my sixth bead. Okay. And I'm going to go up through these two white. Like this. This is so much fun. This is this stitch is just as addicting as the daisy chain stitch. And in each version, either just with the flowers and butterflies or just all butterflies, both of them are so much fun. Okay, so I just brought the bead up and it's this one right here. In case I missed it. Okay, so now they match. Now I'm gonna do the top wings. So this is where it's different from the daisy chain stitch. Well, it's different now. But, um, you know, I would not normally go to the top and add beads. So coming out the white, because we just added this bead here, I'm going to go left through the black body of the butterfly, picking up six white seed beads. Three, four, five six okay you want to go through the top left seed bead right there of your butterfly pull this through this is going to go like that okay so then once you pull it and you have this shape you want to take the needle and go through the first white bead that you picked up coming out of the black seed bead Okay, like this. Okay, it's it's kind of looking like a bow. Now pick up six white again. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Six. Like this go through the white one on this side now pull your tail through okay see it kind of looks like a bow it's so cute take the needle and pull that tight because I want you to see my thread my camera focus my threads coming out of here this bead so I have to go through the this next white one and then go through the black bead because we have to add the antenna okay just like that coming out the black seed bead pull this tight now pick up two black seed beads for the antenna. Now here's the thing, I did find that if I can find the narrow ones, the kind of squished looking seed beads, they work better and they look more antenna-like than the whiter ones. See how those are kind of narrow, like a donut, right? And then there's wide ones, like let me find a wide one so you can see what I'm talking about. That one there is wide. Maybe some people won't notice this. I notice this. See what I'm saying? Okay, so you're just going to want two black seed beads. You're going to want to go through the body again. So this black seed bead again. You're going to want to go through the wing. So right beside that black bead, go through the white seed bead. Okay, and then you're going to want to go through the next white one 
So, just like this, you're going through three beads. Picked up two black, going through these. Okay, I'm gonna pull this through. And I might actually wanna pull that tight. Okay, and then pull this through. Pull all this thread through. And here's your antennas. Now it's sitting up on the top. Okay, doesn't look like antennas yet. But if you take your fingers and you push this down, pull this tight, it looks like antennas. Now I have to keep those antennas in place, and I also have to reposition my needle to, you know, do more work. So I'm going to go around this ring, ugh, around the wing. So I just went through two more white beads. I'm going to go through these two white beads. You know, she wanted to come in here. She just had to be in here, and now she already wants to leave. Okay, so now I have this. I'll be back. I forgot to mention, when I made this loop here for my clasp, before I made it into a circle, that was the time to pick up a split ring, because right now I can't put a split ring on this, but I can do jump rings, and that's what I'm doing with this one, so that's why I forgot to tell you guys. So, I'm going to make this whole bracelet and at the end I'll put my jump rings on but if you're using split rings you have to pick them up while you're stitching okay so we left off here before my cat interrupted me I was coming out this I picked up these two beads for the antenna went through this black bead went through these six white beads one two three four five six now what I have to do is pick up another black because I don't think the antenna is good enough it needs to be longer looking so I'll pick up one black seed bead and go through these two black okay and then see how it's looking better pick up another black seed bead and you can use the wider ones for this part you don't have to be narrow I'm going to skip over these two white ones and I'm gonna go through this one. Okay, let me flip it over like this. You'll see when I go through. I think I'm tying a knot. I better undo that. There we go. Tight. And there's our first butterfly. So awesome. Okay, so I have to stitch down through the next white bead like this to add the green part and then the flower and make sure you pull it tight I'm going to take my needle and pick up green and I'm gonna go for my second flower color it's gonna be blue and then green again like this take the needle go up through this white bead Pull this between your fingers, pull the thread through. We have this. I'm going to pick up green again and another blue. Go down through this blue seed bead. Pull it between your fingers. Make sure you have really good tight thread. Like this, we are making another flower. So two beads again, blue and a yellow. Take the needle, go up through the top blue seed bead. Hold it between your fingers, pull through. There's half our flower. I need two more blue. My needle's bent. Like that. Go down through this blue, and again, hold it between your fingers. It will loosen up like crazy if you don't. Pull it tight. And there's our flower. It's so cute. Green part again. Okay, so the green leaf part. And then we have to pick up the color of our next butterfly, which is going to be orange. And then green again. Now oh, come on. Why is everybody hopping off the needle? Like this. Go up through this blue seed bead. Hold it between your fingers. Like this, pick up a green and an orange. I really like the uh, 
orange butterfly. He's so cute. Down through this orange seed bead. And like, it's the perfect way to use orange seed beads if you're scared of that color. And yellow, too. Those two colors, I've always kind of been like, I'm not crazy about them because they're just so loud. Okay, just like this. We have to make a little circle now. So three orange seed beads. I'm going to sew down through these three, or these two, excuse me. I, I picked up three. We have five orange in total. Going through. Pull this tight. Pick up one orange. Go up through two like this. Hold it between your fingers and pull through. Now we have six. I'm gonna pick up a black seed bead, an orange, and a black. Come on. Like this. I'm gonna go down the second orange one here. You have to pry it out. It likes to hide underneath. Okay, like that. Pull this through. Pick up a black seed bead and an orange seed bead. Okay, go up through this orange. Hold it between your fingers. Like that. And then two orange. One, two, three orange, excuse me. Three orange, go through these two orange, hold them between your fingers. Okay, remember this part's important. You have to stitch down through these three beads you just added, and you'll have to do two and then get that third one. Okay, I'm gonna pull that tail, this tail here, because it's loosening up on me, and then pull this tail. And it's still loosened up on me. So, there we go. Okay, so I just grab that and just doing some adjusting. It's tight now. I'm going to pick up one orange, go up through these two, like this. See? Go through the black seed bead in the middle. Pull that tight. Pick up six orange. Four, five, six. Okay. I'm gonna go through this orange one here on the left side that's sticking out. Like this. And then once you pull this down, you get that loop going. This part here, I did forget like two times. Make sure you always pull the w wings down because you have to go through this first orange seed bead and through the black one like this. If you skip over that orange and just go through the black, your thread will be exposed. Okay, just like that. And again, pick up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one orange seed bead is a different shade. That's weird. I'm gonna put that to the side. It's lighter. Okay, there's my six orange. I'm gonna go through this one here. right side come on okay there it is so always remember to pull your wing down and then go through the first orange that we had added in this loop and through the black just like that hold this between your fingers and pull the thread pull it tight okay you should have this cute little just looks like a bug. Doesn't even look like a butterfly yet. We need antennas. So I look for two narrow ones again. 
like this. They just sit better. Go back through the black CB, the same one you're coming out of. Go through the orange CB beside. And if you can, go through the next orange sea bead. I just try to do as many as I can in one shot. Am I going to get through three? Oh, I got through the third orange one. Okay, so just like that. Pull this through. Okay, so up through these two. And then through this one orange here because we need that gap to add another black seed bead so if you pull that through and you squish this see how there's just enough space for one seed bead that's how I know where to put that seed bead okay so one And then go through the two black sea beads. Squish it down, pull it tight. Looks like this. Pick up another black sea bead and go through these two on the top. See, there's another gap there. We're just filling that gap. that. Go down through one seed bead. Oops. I don't know. It's getting away. It's flying away. Alrighty. We are now in position to do another flower. I think I'm going to do another flower and another butterfly with you just to make sure you got this. I'll stop there. Alright, so again a green bead for the leaf and then the next flower bead. So I'm starting over the entire pattern again so I have to do my red flower. So I'm going back to here and at this point what you can do is look back at what you've already done to see what you have to do next. So I have to pick up green again. Okay. I'm going to take the needle and go up through this orange bead, the top one. Okay. An orange, or not an orange, a green, good grief, and a red. And then go through the red, and this area gets loose, so you have to hold it between your fingers. Like this. Two more reds. And a yellow. Okay, go up through the red on the top. Hold it between your fingers. Two reds again. One, two. Go down through this one. It's sticking out. It's saying, hey, go for me to complete a circle that looks like a little red flower. Like that. We have to do green. So if you look back over here, we're coming out of this bead. We have to pick up green. We're going to pick up our next color for our butterfly. It's going to be white and then green again and we have to go through that red bead. Okay? Over here. Green, white, and green through this red bead. Like that. A green and a white. Go through the white and I feel like my uh, flower is getting loose there, so let's see. Will it tighten up if I just do this? So, what I could do is pull this area here to tighten up my flower, and then there we go. 
I have to pick up three white because I have two that are white. I need a total of five, just like this. I have to make a circle, so I have to go in this direction to make a circle. If I went in the other direction, I would make a teardrop. Now I have this. I have to make the butterfly wings point at the bottom. So for that detail, I'm picking up one white seed bead and I'm going through these two white right there. Pulling this out. And again, like I said, you can always look back to see what you did. To see what you have to do next. So I'm coming out here. I have to pick up a black, a white, and a black and go for this bead. See what I'm saying? It's like a little map. Black, white, black. Go through the second white bead that's hiding. It's hiding under that top bead. Like this. I'm going to pull this tail here because it's loosening up on me. Okay, hold it between your fingers. Bring it tight. There's our body forming. I need another black. That one's too narrow. Mm, here's a good one. And a white. Like this. Go up through the white. Like that. Three whites. One, two, three. That's two. There's three. Okay? Form a circle. So go this way. Pull this through. We have to sew back down. This here is deceiving us, right? It's making it look like it's right, but it's not. We need uh, six beads here. So we have to add another bead here for the point of the bottom of our butterfly wing, where it's like a pointed shape down there, to make it look more like a butterfly. So I went through two beads. I'm going to go through the third one. Pick up one white seed bead. I think I need to bend my needle more into a banana shape, because right now it's twisted. That makes the beads fall off on me. So I'm going to go up through these two white. And then through this one. So let me know down in the comments if you would like me to make more stitches like this and also what kind of animal or pattern would you like me to come up with? Let me know down in the comments. I was thinking of doing a ladybug bracelet because I've already done a ladybug ring in the past. Now I'm going to pick up six white for the top of the wing. And that's five. One more. Okay. I have to turn and go through the left white bead like this. That top bead's going to come down for me. I have to take the needle, this part here. Make sure you do this because this is a part I skipped like a couple of times. Go through that first white one and through the black bead, the body there. Okay, and then add the top of your right side. So six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Go to the top white. I am going to show you how to finish this, by the way, on this one, because it does take up time for me to stitch this. I'm actually filming late at night right now. I did have this video, like, prepared two weeks ago, but I was not able to film it till now. So I'm going through this white sea bead and through the black, okay, hold this between your fingers. Like this, pull it tight, 
Pick up two beads for the antenna. Two skinny white ones, or donut shaped ones, flat ones. Go through the black seed bead, through the white one next to it. Okay, and also is through as many of the white ones you can over here on this side. Let's see. Can I do three again? Yes. Actually, I am doing four. Holy cow. Pull through. Take the needle, pass through these two white ones here. Okay, I'm gonna go back and make sure you could tell what I'm doing. I went through this black one, and then I went through one, two, three, four, five, six white ones. And did those mess up on me? Okay, I just had to pull up. The thread was showing, so I, I flipped them down because they were stuck and fixed it. I'm going to pick up a seed bead, black one. I'm going to go through these two black. like this, another black seed bead, and I gotta flip this, it's driving me crazy. I'm gonna go through these two white ones, like this, and then down through the one white, and we're gonna add the greenery again, and then a flower, and I'll stop there. Okay, so just like this. I'm going to pick up a green and my flower color, which will now be blue. So I just have to look back at what I did previously. Green. Go through the top white bead. So I'm coming out of this one, so the one above it. I'm going to go up through that one. This is actually a teardrop shape. It's not a circle like we did at the bottom of the, the wings there. Okay. So see, it's like a teardrop that we're making. You get what I'm saying? Pick up a green and a blue. Go down through the blue. Hold it between your fingers because it gets loose. Pick up two blue. One, two. A yellow. Go up through the blue from the bottom. Hold it between your fingers. Half the flower is done. And I'm going to grab two more blue again and complete the flower. Go down. There we go. Okay. So if you have any trouble with this, rewind it to where I came out of this blue flower at the same point that I am here. Rewind it to where I came out of this blue flower. And then you just repeat the steps along with me making this over again. And um, you might get the hang of it as you go within your first bracelet. Or you might have to watch me a couple times. But um, once you get the hang of it, it is so addicting. I really love it. Alright, so once you get to the length you need, and remember you have to add in the length of your clasp, what I like to do is I like to put my jump ring on my clasp and then connect my other jump ring to the clasp and I measure that to see how long it is. And you can't go by how many butterflies is like however many inches. It's all the seed bead sizes because this is a 10 -o, and look at how much longer, okay? Look at the length difference with different size seed beads. So I can't tell you if you do like 7 butterflies it's 8 inches. No. It depends on the size of the bead. Okay, so this is surpassing. Okay, already. So you have to exit out of a flower because we started with a flower. I'm coming out of the flower. I'm going to pick up the same amount of seaweeds that I picked up at the beginning, which is five. Okay, and it's green. And if you're using split rings, you pick it up now. I'm using jump rings. I can pick it up later, but since mine's already closed, I'm just going to pick it up now. So you pick up your five seed beads and your jump ring. 
coming out of the flower, you have to make a circle. So go through the two seed beads, making a circle like this, and then go back and reinforce them again. You always want to go through at least two times, or three. Depends on what I'm making, but I've also gone back about six times, but that's because of the stitch that I was doing. So I'm just going back through all five a second time. And then I'm going to go through the pink, because see I have a gap. So I have to close it up. Okay, let's see. And if you want, you can go through again, and let's do it. So I'm going to go through one. And I'm going to tie a knot right here. I am using green thread for this one because it was pretty well hidden in my uh, project. So make a loop, go through it twice, one and two. Slowly bring it down so it doesn't tie a weird knot. Hold it in place and pull that knot, knot tight. Now you can also, you know, you, you want to go through like two beads and then tie another knot. But, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to tie another knot here. I just want to weave down into my work because I want to show you guys how to weave through this so you could tie knots in your work because I don't want you to get confused on me. Okay, so I'm just weaving down into the work. Now, every time I tie knots in something I make, I always want to follow previous thread paths and not make any new thread paths where there aren't any because it could warp the design but if you're in a tight situation and you have to go through an area you've never been through before just make sure that it's not warping the piece and you can do it okay so I'm gonna go through this pink bead I can't tie a knot here by the way it is totally gonna be seen you want to tie a knot on the inside so go through that pink bead at the top of the flower I'm gonna go down through this pink bead and tie a knot here because it will be hidden. So there's a thread. I hope you can see what I'm doing. That's right here. I'm lifting it up, bending that, lifting it up, making a loop. Okay. I gotta find the right side. Let me see. It's twisting. Right here. I'm gonna go through this loop twice. One and two times. Slowly bring that knot down right there. Pull it tight and pass the needle through the next bead. Okay? Hide that knot. It disappears. Go through this bead. I'm following my previous thread path. As you can see, carefully don't get caught in anything. Going up, I'm gonna tie another knot here. Okay? But for filming purposes, I'm gonna show you how to go into the butterfly. So I'm not going to tie a knot here, but I would. My thread is uh, uh, long enough where I can, you know, really reinforce this if I want to. But I'm going to skip the knot just to show you how to go through the butterfly. So go into the butterfly. Where am I at? I'm coming out of this white bead here. I'm actually already in the butterfly. Go into this bead here. I'm in the wing. Okay, the stitch is changing now. We're out of the... Daisy chain. I'm at the butterfly. I could tie a knot right here at the bottom of the wing. So I make a loop. Go through twice. Bring the knot down slow. Right there. I want that knot to fall. I'm going to go through two beads again. Okay. And looking for the next best place to tie a knot. I don't think I want to tie any knots here. It's tight. So I'm going to go down through these two. Okay, following previous thread path. Go through the bottom of the body. Up through this one. I can't go through that bead because there's never been a thread there. It would also pull the butterfly and it would warp it. So up through this. Now let's see, can I tie a knot here? It is a little tight. Nah, I don't want to. It's too tight, it's going to be annoying. So I'm going to go up through the next bead. And I'm at a right angle. 
So I can't tie a knot there. I'm gonna go through here. Okay. And then I'm gonna come down this next bead and I will tie a knot here. It's a perfect place. I can bend this, go underneath, catch that thread, make a loop, pass through it twice. Okay, I do like to tie, I like to tie a lot of knots, but you could tie at least three and be fine. But after you tie your last knot, make sure that you weave through several beads before you cut it off so it doesn't come out. So I'm just weaving through. Okay, I'm back to the flower. I could tie another knot here in the center. I'm really just tying knots in the center of the bracelet because the knots aren't seen. So I could tie another knot here, go up through this purple, that one, come down through here, tie another knot there. You get what I'm saying? Alrighty, so that's pretty much it for this one. Let's go to the next bracelet. To make the butterfly version, remember you have to use seven feet of thread. This one here was six feet, but this all butterfly takes up more thread, so you have to use seven feet. So I already cut my seven feet of eight pound tire line, and I'm going to use two colors this time, which is really awesome, especially for those of you that don't have a lot of colors to work with. So this color here is hematite or gunmetal. These are Czech seed beads. This used to be my favorite color when I first started of seed beads. I just think they're so cool. All right, and there are like uh, different color variations of this bead. This one's the most metallic I have found, but I have seen darker ones. I have darker ones in my stash. And this bead here is also Czech. Both of them are Czech. I got these beads, I think, off of a purse that I found a very long time ago. I think the purse was antique. Uh, vintage is 20 years, antique I think is 100 years, but anyways, the purse was so doggone old. It was supposed to be white, but it was brown because it was so old and it's falling apart. So I rescued the beads from it because it would have gone in the trash. These beads are really unique. I've never seen these so sold before. The color's actually like opal. It's like transparent with a luster on it. It's like pearl. It's really pretty. So I will be using these. Okay, and I have a ton of them for that purse. All right, first we're gonna make the loop for our closure, and I forgot to get my jump rings or slit rings, doesn't matter. Um, if you're using jump rings, you can put them on later, but if you're using slit rings, you have to put them on now as you pick up the beads. So I wanna start with my butterfly color first. This one I started with my flower color first. I picked up, um, actually it was this one. I picked up the red first and then the green. I'm gonna start with the butterfly color first. So. Let's do white butterfly so you can see what I'm doing. And then the hematite color. This will be for our closure. Okay. And I got five. So two and five. Slide these down. We're going to leave a six inch tail just like before. Pass through all of them like this. Okay, measure your tail, I want to leave a six inch tail, and can you believe that my cat already came back? She wanted back in already after panicking because the door was closed. Okay, right there, tie a surgeon's knot over and under one time, make sure that it falls where you need it, over and under twice now. Pull that tight. Take the needle. And go through the two white beads. Because this is going to be our butterfly. Okay. So every time you ever start a project with a knot, you can't start picking up beads at the knot. You always have to go through beads before you... Uh, start picking up beads. Okay, so remember the butterfly started with five. I should have fixed my needle. I forgot. 
So I have two. I'm picking up three. I'm going to go through these two. Okay. Making a circle of five. Coming out here, I have to pick up my sixth bead to make the bottom of the wing pointed to get that pretty butterfly shape. So I'm going to go through two beads like this. So remember in this one we started with a flower and then we did the green part and then the butterfly. This one we go right to the butterfly. Here I am. I'm going to pick up the body color so I'm just going to go to my second color, the metallic one. And then the butterfly color and then the body color again like this. Go through the second bead. Like this. Pick up my body color and the color of the butterfly. Go up through the white. Hold it between your fingers. I actually kind of thought this one had like a bridal look to it also. And this one goes with everything. It's very pretty. It's just like this. Pick up three. One. Two. Three. Go through these two white. And you have to put between your fingers. Pull the thread tight. Okay. Like this. Oh, I forgot to mention. When I took my thread and I wrapped it around my ruler. That's how I measure my thread. I noticed that I somehow had a knot in my thread. Okay, I went through those two. But I also have to go through this one. Because we have to add that one seed bead to the bottom of the wing, just like we did on the first side. Pull it tight, just like that. Pick up one white, go through these two. I wonder what other combinations, color combinations, would look good other than white and black. through here and you know you got to look up I went through out of this bead went through these two I'm gonna go through the body just like we did you know and the other the stitch is the same pretty much there's only a, a couple places where it's different through the body bead and then pick up another wing anyways look up butterflies because butterflies come in like every color pick up six white again we got more than six that time okay now I have six go through this white one hopefully that knot that's in my thread won't cause any problems so far so good just like that go through here so when you go to do the second butterfly it's gonna seem a little strange but I'll show you and you might want to, when you go to do this, you're going to have to choose, you know, which one you want to do. The butterfly version or the one with the flower. And you're going to want to stay with that for a little bit until, until you decide to do the other one in case you want to do both. So you don't confuse yourself. Just like this. Okay. Did I screw something up? I did. I forgot to go through that top bead because I was I was talking. So I'm just gonna go back for that bead. I'm kinda distracted by the cat too. I wish she would make up her mind, okay? So I picked up six beads, went through that white one. I forgot to go through this white one. Remember I told you guys that was a, a an area that I would forget that I forgot before? I told you. Okay, I have to go through that one, the first one, and then through the the body, like that. Okay, at least I caught it though, that's what's important. There we go, now it looks better. So it's a good thing I had the mistake, so you could see, see what it looked like. Alrighty, picking up six again. 
like this, go through this top bead. And I want the thread to be on the top, so move that around. Okay. And don't go through the body. Don't be like me. Go through this first white bead that you added and then through the body. Okay. So cute. Just like that. I'm going to pick up my two beads for the antenna. As soon as I let that cat in, she's going to walk back out again. She has a thing about closed doors. I have to go back through this bead that's for the body. Okay, it's kind of like I'm making a circle, but with three beads. Move those up. They're not flipping right, so I'm just going to flip them up. And then, you know, we're coming out of the body part right here. I have to go through these. So, we're just making the butterfly like we have all this time. Nothing's changing until we finish this butterfly then it starts to change when we go to start the next one do those two beads like we usually do okay going around like we have been going around the wings oh come on through these two okay so now I have this okay so here I am adding in my antenna beads like we normally would through these two. One more. Through these two. Down through one, just like we usually would. Okay, here's where it's going to be different. So this butterfly was made exactly the same way as I made these. They're all made the same. Really, I didn't even have to show you guys how to make this. I could have just, you know, showed how to do the loop and then go to this point to show you that this is already made because it's made the same way as those. So this is where it gets different. You're going to do two seed beads in the opposite color of what you have now and you're gonna go through these two okay for the next butterfly bring these down you want them to sit side by side just like this go up to these two pull this thread through pick up three beads because you remember you have to do a circle Okay, you have to make the circle, so go through here. Now, in this stitch, when you made this circle, the first circle for the butterfly, for the bottom left wing, what would you normally do? You would pick up one bead and go through these two. Okay, but doing it this way, is going to change the direction of the butterfly so this one's facing this way this one's gonna be facing that way so that's how I got the direction to work so pretty simple so there's the bottom left wing 
This one's facing this way. This one's upside down. I'm going to pick up white for the body now. And then, you know, my wing color. And white for the body again. And you got to go down to that second bead that's always hiding. Like this. I got a little loose there. So I'm going to pull that tail. And then pull this through. Okay, so you're going to continue to make the butterfly. Just like you have been this whole time. It's just that area right there that's different. So pick up one white, one hematite, go through that hematite. Different. We're adding on one's facing down, one's facing up. We're adding on the next color butterfly. It's going to be white again. Pick up two beads. Sew it in a circle direction. So you're going to go through these two. Bring your needle through. Okay, like that. Go back up through the two white you added. Just like this. Bolt through. Just like that. Pick up three like you normally would. You're just gonna continue on doing the butterfly this butterfly. The butterfly the same way that you did in this bracelet. You're gonna do it in this bracelet. Three beads, go through these two. Okay. And just remember picking up those three beads, sliding them down. You have to flip this. So, normally you would pick up one bead, right? So you have to flip this over, pick up one bead, oops, and go through these two. Okay. So, like that. Continue on. I might fast forward this a little bit to the next butterfly. Because it's just that connection point, really, that's the thing. That's what's different. So the box. Here. Okay, so this is up. This is upside down. Up. Oh, next is going to be upside down. I have to pick up two beads again. But in the other butterfly color, go down through these two. Okay. And hold it between your fingers tightly, or it'll fly out of your hand. Like this. You have to go back through these two again. Okay. And then you just start the next one you know we're gonna do the circle so three go through these three or these two excuse me okay now pull through so remember the next butterfly has to be facing up this one's upside down so I have to pick up one bead. You always have to pick up one seed bead after you create this ring of five. So as soon as you come, you add those three. As soon as you go through those two and you have your ring of five, you have to pick up one. So you have to flip it over and then go up through these two. Okay? And then you continue on making the butterfly the same exact way. It's just the connection point that's really different. So that's it for this. I'm going to... We're going to finish this one off, and by the way, um, you know, these, I left with these with a six inch tail, so you will be finishing them off the ends the same exact way, so I already tied this end back into my work, now I'm going to add the rest of the closure and tie this back in too, here I am, I'm going to pick up my five seed beads, in my closure, slide them down. I'm going to go through these two 
making a circle and then I'm going to sew back through these again carefully you don't get caught especially when you're putting on a clasp and you don't have to use you know a lobster claw you can use whatever you want toggle spring ring going through this bead and see it's loose but once I go through the butterfly it's gonna tighten up okay pull tight I'm gonna tie another knot in the ring like I did before for the other one it's just convenient so I'll go through there make a loop pass through it twice make sure you have no slack when you're doing this the first time because it will get looser slowly pull it down okay that's good and I'm gonna pass through two beads tie another knot but for filming purposes I'm gonna skip it because it's taking up time and this video is getting very lengthy I'm gonna go back through okay back through the butterfly now last time we tied knots in the flower and the other one this time we have to tie knots in the butterfly if I tie a knot here it will be seen it will stick out I have to go into the work more just like I did with the other one so I will go through here with the first bead and I can tie a knot here so I go through the loop okay go through there twice and I want my knot to fall here so I'm gonna pull this up so the knot falls right there pull that tight and I can't go down because I've never gone that way before so I have to follow previous thread paths so go through there right just like everything we make always follow previous th thread paths and then I can go down okay and then I can go for the black seed bead it's too tight here to tie any knots and I can go back down through these two or I can go through these two let's see I have only one thread path here on the bottom so let's go uh, let's go up if we go up then we go that way okay let's go up so I'll go through this one yellow it's just gonna give me a second thread path what is going on okay through this top one again I still don't want to tie a knot here it's too tight and it's not a good place okay go down I can tie a knot here if I want because I'm in the middle of the work if you're on the outside of the work you can't really tie a knot it'll be seen so I'm in the middle I'm gonna go through here make a loop pass through it twice and by the way the thread on this is longer than needed because I was trying to figure out how much thread to use so I use extra and then I subtracted the amount that was wasted to figure out how much I needed to tell you guys so you didn't waste your thread tying the knot there going down through the seed bead And then, I hope you guys can't hear that cat. If I let her in, she's just going to cry on this side of the door and it'll be louder. Unless it's muffled on that side. Okay, up. And then I can tie another knot here. I'm just going to do the same thing. And I like to tie about, um, like I said, I like to do like four or five knots, but you could do three if you want. But it's up to you. So I'll, I'll tie another knot here and I'll do some reinforcing cut it off and I'm all done so that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I know it was long but I hope that I was very informative and I gave you as many tips as possible and I answered as many questions as possible without you having to ask them in this video that's something I'd love to do is just uh, give you guys so much information that you don't even have to ask me questions but there we go so awesome um it's hard to choose a favorite 
I really love this one. I love this one, but I, I also like this one. Like each one of them has something special about them. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had so much fun designing this. I had a lot of fun teaching you. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos and follow me on my social media sites. I'm on Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching.